well, we have to do this. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Huculo webinar. It is Saturday 11-11, which is November the 11th. So welcome to this very nice and energetic day. Um, in the workshop today, we have Amanda, we have Christine, we have dogs barking. <laughs> Okay, we have dogs barking, so sorry, sorry about that. So let me start over. In the, in the room today, we have Amanda, we have Christine, we have Nikolai, who's running the controls, uh, Lana and Stephanie, and myself, Karen Newman. We have my dog, Tommy, who is uh, barking at everybody. And um, just to tell you, this is Human Colony. Uh, we are a group of mostly channelers and people who like channeling. If you want to learn more about Human Colony, go to Hucolo, which is H-U-C-O-L-O.org, and you can find out about all of our events. We have every Saturday a channeling webinar, and then during the week we have different workshops and different things you can participate in. Coming up in February, the 1st through the 6th in Sedona, Arizona, will be the Sedona Ascension Workshop, and that will be run by Jim Charles and by Max. And uh, there they'll be looking at topics like group ascension, earth grid, vortex work, galactic Reiki, uh, Reiki 1 and 2, telepathy, channeling, and chanting. And all the classes are um, there for everyone that's participating. The cost for five nights is $575, and that includes um, the housing. So you can check it out on humancolony.org or hucolo.org and just click Sedona Ascension Workshop. So I'll be taking questions. I'm going to be channeling my higher self, which is called Theos. And um, I will basically just go into, um, I'll go into trance and I'll be just taking questions from the room. If anybody who's in the YouTube wants to ask a question, hopefully somebody can monitor that chat and we can take those questions too. So is everybody ready? Yes? Okay, perfect. I hope that they said yes. They may or may not be ready, but we'll see. Okay. Nikolai, you ready? <laughs> okay. I can't I'm ready. see you. You have to answer so I can see you, hear you. Okay. Here we go. I'm ready. Yay. Okay, if you want to ohm with me, what I do is I ohm and I, I just, I just, Vibrationally, I connect to Theos, and, and you'll see. I do channel with my eyes open, so I will open my eyes, and then you'll, and, and they'll announce that they're here, so, okay. Oh.
We are Theos, and we are so very pleased to speak with you. And the reason we have the hands over the heart is because of our heartfelt appreciation of each and every one of you and to be able to share with you in this way. There's always a moment when Karen makes her connection to us where she feels like we will spring completely out of her, but that's not actually true. We're much, it's a much more gentle entry, but the excitement is real. And we hope for each one of you that in your own making of connection to yourselves, that you experience the great love that we wish to share with you today. And that's really our goal, is to help you to connect to yourself, because it's one thing to have the conversation about it and another thing to experience it. So we would recommend to you that, however possible, that you find a way to be still and to truly seek yourself. Because within you is everything that you really ever need to know. And we don't say that lightly, and we don't say that with anything less than 100% certainty. You were created with an innate ability to connect. And whether you believe it or not, it's possible. So your highest goal should be that connection, to seek yourself, to seek the knowing part of you, the deepest part of you. We've started telling Karen that what we're not doing is channeling, but really in fact, and here is the cat, that we are having higher consciousness conversations with you. And you also have the ability to have those within yourself. Anything you would want to ask, whether it's from like human colony is concerned into aliens or the highest depth of consciousness questions. All of that is available to you. But in the meantime, we are here for you and we will answer any question that you may have. So namaste and we're very pleased to be here. Does anyone have a question? And we are playing with the cat now because he is going to start pushing everything off the table. We know that about him. So. If there's not already someone in the queue, this is Stephanie. I have a question. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. Greetings. Thanks again for being with us. Well, thank you, you for thank you for being here as well. Mm. This is with regards to uh, entity attachment. Mm. Yes. There, there are um, there are some psycho, uh, not psycho. Let's see. Well, it sounds There's very. Some psycho. Psycho. Sorry. <laughs> I've, been, I've been listening to some some uh, past regression sessions where individuals have had entity attachments to them that they didn't necessarily invite. Mm. It might have been in a moment of, you know, um, emotions that were maybe not as positive. They may have been feeling low or lonely or... Yes. Um, unhappy in some way and the entity finds them and just attaches themselves yes. and so what my question I have a, a question and a follow-up question is if we're the creators of our own reality and I believe we are and we have contracts for one thing or another how is it that these entities are able to attach to us with what seems to me clearly not necessarily our agreement well very good questions and because you use a lot of terminology such as agreements and contracts and and things like that we we will say for you just for the sake of this conversation to let a lot of that go because okay. the universe is is not as legally bound as contracts and things lead it to be 
So when you talk about contracts, you, you say, well, this is what my agreement is and, and such like that. But just for the sake of this conversation, and we'll explain to you how things work, and then we'll, we'll come back to what you said. But we, we like very much your question, because this was a question Karen had had. Uh, one of her original teachers did a lot of work with people with spirit attachment, and she was very well known for doing spirit attachment and release. And she had... Karen, we're saying, had very much the same questions about how is this really possible. So if you know that everything is vibration, which you do, you understand that everything is vibration. All of creation is in fact vibration. And this vibration, everything exists. You can think of it in a hierarchical way just for ease. But everything you would say is in sort of vibrational levels dimensions that we are are in vibration. Uh, everything that exists has its own sort of vibration. And vibrations that are similar will attract each other. So when you talk about that entities attach to someone when they're in a vulnerable state, then that can also be true. There can be some trauma or some sort of drug use or something that will open up the energy field of that being and then that sort of low vibrational rate will just attract more things to it. The same thing does happen in a high vibrational rate, but higher energies don't really feel the need to attach to you. So sometimes it's an entity and sometimes it's what's called a thought form. The thought form in, in an entity sometimes are basically interchangeable because low energies are low energies and they will attach sort of like a moth to a light. You know, they see that light and they, and they go for it. Um, and they may or may not even be conscious of their attachment to it, but they may just be following light. So it, it happens because of karma and and karma is not to know what karma really is is karma is basically what we said it's vibrational levels that are attracting more of the same to it so if you are pooling in for a long period of time in a certain vibration then all of the things of that vibration come with it that also happens at in good vibration all of the things that are in the good vibration sort of come with it so it's very important to understand what you're doing and, and the, the consequences that come with it. So in that way, it is really a moth to a flame kind of idea that these, these things, we wouldn't say attach, but more like glom on. You know, it's like if you walk with a long skirt through a street, you will sort of pick up all the dirt and twigs and everything that's being, you know, picked up by your, by your clothing without having any idea that you're picking them up. And in, in some ways you don't even know. And in some ways there's no control. It just sort of gets gathered unconsciously. The question then is once you have them, what do you do with them? And the thing is you, you get them released. So it's not even so much that these thought forms attack and attach, but that it's sort of a wide neck that can be cast out and they're picked up, you know? It's like walking and finding something at the bottom of your shoe and you're thinking, how did I get there? Get that, it could have been a nail, it could be mud, it could be other things that are on the ground and they just get stuck in. So, do you understand that? Yes, okay. yes I do, especially um, from an energy standpoint. So from an energetic standpoint, that's really what happens. There are some that are also within their sort of own. Um, you have you have within you have within um, the Hindu thought. You have what are called the doshas, and you have doshas, and you have different um, you have different things. You have different states of being. You have a sort of tamasic state which is a very low energy and that low energy is where crime happens it's where people are depressed it's where pain is 
in 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 grief and and all of these sort of kind of low things. So you have rajasic energy, which is a movement. It can be a movement up. It can be a movement down. And then you have a sort of sattvic energy, which is a high energy. And most of the time, when the low energies are attaching, there's these really tamasic energies. The way to avoid these is to, and they can release on their own. You don't always have to sort of go to someone to get rid of them. As you raise your vibration, what happens is it sort of shakes everything off. As you, as you clear yourself, those things really can't hold on to you anymore. But the lower and the longer that you stay in those states, the more of that stuff that can just gather. And once you have, it's, it's, it's just, we, we want to give you really good, graspable um, analogies, but sort of once that starts building up, you know, more and more and more of stuff comes with it. So the dirtier it gets, the dirtier it gets. And as things are there longer, you know, they begin to fester and grow and mold is growing and all kinds of stuff starts happening sort of spontaneously as a result of just that little bit of infection of it. So the way to avoid that is not so much to be to dive into the contract situation because then you get into this thing of I feel violated in some way. The thing to do is just change your vibration and those things can't stay with you. Now you can have things that, that you believe that are blocks because it can be very heavy energy and then you have to really work through getting rid of them. But the way to get rid of it is to, to start changing your energy and to raise your energy. And contractually, it is sort of a known thing within the universe that like attracts like, that where attention goes, energy flows. So contractually, you've agreed to that coming into this world. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example with sure. myself. Sure. I, there were a couple of, uh, I had some pain in my knee and pain in my back. And One moment, because we are going to have to mute our microphone because the dog doesn't like skateboarders that are going by outside. So one second, but you can All continue right. speaking. Okay, go ahead. So I, I had a pain in my lower back and a pain in my knee. Mm -hmm. I came to understand that the one in my knee was third dimensional. It was uh, something called a poplar cyst and that the pain in my back was a thought form. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know and didn't ask about how it got there or how long it had been there. I know that I had been having that lower back pain for uh, over a year. And I, two things. I didn't know how to distinguish between what was a thought form um, or an attachment and what was third dimensional, just maybe my body aging, um, and arthritis or something. And, uh, the difference between the two, whether it was a thought form or 3d. And then if I was doing the things spiritually that I felt led to do, how it could still be there. I had to call in help from actually, um, one of the my galactic family and also Jesus. Okay. To help clear that. Yes. Well, that that so, should be that shouldn't be ahead. a that well. Okay, two things. One is that it's good to know that you have the help, that you can have the help when you need it, and the, and the second, there's nothing wrong with needing help, and there's no should have or would have. The, the point is that this came to your awareness because it was something that was within you. This thought form could have been a past life coming forward to be cleared. You have to understand that the pain came forward not to punish you in any way, but the reason it came into your awareness is because it's time to clear it. Now, maybe it took you some time to identify it and be able to let it go, but it came into your awareness because it's time to let it go. So be glad and be glad that you were able to know what it is and that you were able to let it go. So, you know, we store different things within the physical body. Karen does, and she can't do it with any of you now because you're not physically with her, but she will hold someone's hand. And, and when she 
sort of taps on their fingers and feels around, she starts to get information. And this is part of her mediumship and psychic ability. But she'll get information and she'll, she'll touch a person, say here, and she'll say, um, I'm seeing um, fear, of, fear of driving. And it's something stored within the body. And the person will generally say, yes, I have this fear. And I had this fear since I was a child. And, you know, at first she was thinking, well, what is the point of me getting this information? But she realized that the reason that it was coming up is because it was there. And if it's there, it's really there to let you go. You are such a conglomeration of every thought, every action, every experience you've had, and whatever you've brought with you from before. And those things are brought into your body, but they're brought into your awareness at the moment that it's time to get rid of them. So you can store anything, you know, pain and sorrow and things. They stay with you because they've affected you in such a way. And you don't realize sometimes how deeply something can affect you. It can be the loss of a loved one. It can be um, being not feeling like you were heard as a child. It can be many, many different things. It can be any time where you felt out of your alignment, out of your true knowing of who you are and remembering that. And part of your growth as, as a person is to let that stuff go. So... Jesus is a very good person to bring in. Your galactic family is a very good person to bring in. There's always two things that happen, and the universe is very smart in this. Is One, it came to your awareness, and two, also came the knowledge with how to clear it. So you learned something. You learned that if in the future you have something, maybe it's a thought form, maybe it's an attachment. It really doesn't matter because the two can be so interchangeable, you know, um, some some societies will call something a demon and some people will call it a disease. There's really no difference if it's affecting you. And as long as you're able to clear it, sometimes you're clearing it through modern medicine, sometimes you're clearing it energetically. There's no difference really. So we would say to you that it's good that you realized how to clear it. But don't get so caught up on the why. The why really doesn't matter. Right. The letting go of it matters. Holding on to it, diving into it, trying to figure out exactly what it was and you know, why did you have this and how dare this come to me and what was it in the meaning and was it my past life or three lives ago? And right. Does it matter really or does it really matter that you've come, it's come to your awareness and you've been able to let it go. Some things are over and we'll give you an example. And when Karen was in Australia, there was an example that, that she used and she also had someone who had a similar example. So it was very healing for her, but um, we will tell you her story because she's allowing us to do that. Her father was uh, in, in one point in his life going through a very hard time and he had become very angry um, and he was drinking a lot and to the point where um, he was, that was basically what he did. And she wanted him to have healing for that. And she needed also healing for herself. And she knows her father wanted healing for that. Now her dad had a stroke and that basically stopped his drinking. Um, it also incapacitated him in a lot of ways, but in the same moment, it healed him. And what was one of the amazing things after his stroke is that he had no memory of how he had been before he had his stroke and the anger that he had. And so she was faced for it with a very interesting question about wanting to heal the relationship with her father because he was no longer the person that had been so angry. And she realized that she had to just let it go because by diving into it, she would be trying to fight something that didn't exist anymore, even though she had the pain. So she decided that it was better to let it go. 
And that's what we're saying to you. Sometimes it's better to let it go and not worry about the why or the contract or any of that. And, and we know that that's a very valid thing, especially for empowering yourself. If you know what happened, if you don't know what happened, then it's different. You know, if, if you're regaining your power because you've actually had something happen to you where you know the transgression, you know that someone has taken power from you when you didn't wish to give it. That's a different kind of situation. But when you just have the pain and you have the ability to let it go, let it go and learn from the, the learn the two things. One, it came into your awareness so that you could let it go. And two, how you were able to get rid of it. So you've learned some very valuable things. And those are very valuable tools that you will most probably need to use again in your life. Because as you grow, and as you're trying to clear yourself, and if everything in your life is about getting in alignment, then anything that's in there is going to come up. That's a promise. There's very few of us that have nothing to let go of. So everything... Thank you. So well, much. you're welcome. But everything is a gift to you. Everything yes. is an opportunity for you to grow and to change and to become more yourself and to come more into your own alignment. So see everything like that. And if, if something is, starts getting too much with, because we can, we can understand this idea of how is this possible and why and how dare it and, you know, and especially within Christianity, where they, you know, they scream at it and, you know, you know they, they yell, you know, in the name of Jesus and, and all the, these things, which is, works very well. But there, there, there can be a lot of fear in that. And if you're calling out the name of Jesus, you've got to know that Jesus is, you know, if not one of the most powerful beings, the most powerful being out there. You don't have to scream. You can whisper the name of Jesus in love. And just be proud that you have that, that tool, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, Thank you. you're welcome. But we're very happy for you that you've had this opportunity to learn your ability to heal yourself and to get rid of some of the stuff that's in there. And the next time something comes up, which it will, <laughs> it's a promise. And maybe it's just little stuff, you know, maybe it's little stuff like anger. You know, Karen's noticing a lot of things that she's really trying to clear. And she's noticing, oh, my knee-jerk reaction to that was, Rrr. you know. That's also a way of responding that she wants to get rid of that and changing mentality. So when you notice those things, then you can deal with them much easier and not really delve into the why. Why is, why is my reaction that? Well, that is your reaction, so move for, forward from it. Choose love every time. Yep. I like that. Choose love every time. Mm, we're going to put it on a t-shirt. Or you do it uh, and send hello. us one. Hello, Pio. Hello. Who are we speaking with? Um, the... Wizard of Oz. I am uh, Alexis, and I have the buttons today for the seminar. So I have a question. Okay. From uh, behalf of Nils Olson, that is asking, what does it mean? Eleven Eleven. Well, it means November the eleventh, but it also means a lot of other things, and uh, you have a series of ones, so. One is a, the beginning of something. It is also everything is one. So you have a series of four ones. If you want to go numerology-wise, that would be four, but 11, 11, 11 is a master number, and you have two of them, which would be 22, uh, and that is also a master number, again, going into four. So you have a lot of different things, but... Mostly what it means is that energetically, this is a time to pay attention to everything. Oneness, 
the, in, the completeness of everything and to master that, to master the idea of who you really are. And we will tell you that who you are is everything. You are the aspect of all that is. You are not all that is, but you are part of all of that is. You are the, you are the concept of the creation. You are the drop of the ocean. You are the spark in the fire. You are the drop of the rainstorm. You are divine. And it's a remembrance of that. And mm -hmm. the one, if you associate it with angels, it's angels bringing to your attention who you are as well and the blessings that you have. So that's our short answer. Okay, I have uh, other questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Kami asked a question on the predicted big economic catastrophe. Mm -hmm. What are the reasons, stages of development, timetables, estimate of causes in uh, human deaths, but um, I think Human deaths or deaths? Yes, yes, yes. Deaths? Um, dying uh, deaths? Yes. Mm. He writes dying deaths, but mm. I think, yeah. Well, I think we good. don't, and we've said this before, is that we don't, uh, here comes the cat. We don't see this happening. Um, and there is a lot of, differentiating opinion about whether or not this will happen or not happen. We don't see it happening and we are happy to be wrong. We're very much happy to be right as well. Um, there in, in our projection and our estimated timeline, we don't see mass devastation and mass calamity and destruction for humanity anytime soon you may get close but we don't see this happening so we have only only positive uh, hope for the way things will go this is a great time of change within your world if you look at every single day there's something new coming out but just like the pain in stephanie's back it's being presented to you so that it can be cleared because it's there so humanity is learning to clear a lot of the problems. There's a lot of problems within government. There's a lot of problems within nature. There's a lot of problems within people themselves. But just like we said to Stephanie, when you want to change something, you have to lift your own vibration and humanity is working on it. So. There can be timelines where everything is true. Well, no, we will say it. There are timelines, different ones, and everything is true. That's what we meant to say. And there will be timelines where total devastation happens. We don't plan to participate in those. So we would say to you, if you want to stay safe, if you want to have a different experience, then change your vibration and raise your vibration and go to a place where Everything's going a little bit more positively. Um, we, we, will, we will not be able to really go into this any further because that is our stance and we don't want to facilitate fear or propagate it in any way. Not to say that things cannot go wrong. They, of course, can, but we're not going to be on that timeline when it does. And we would invite you not to be there as well. Okay, one more from the chat. Mm -hmm. Does the zeal chakra has anything to do with the gift of prophecy? Does the which chakra? Uh, zeal. Z I A L. Zeal. We don't, we're not familiar with that term zeal. Me either. But. Mm -hmm. Well, if is a chakra, that's do with the gift of prophecy. What is it? 
And if yes, what kind of inner work can I do for amplifying that gift? Okay, well, as far as your chakras are concerned, the chakras that would have uh, the most effect would be everything sort of from your heart up. So your heart, your throat, your third eye, and then your crown chakra would be the one. Um, the crown chakra would be getting information coming in. Your lower chakras are more about your stability and your well-being and things like that. So to, to work on getting any kind of information, you just really have to work on your own alignment and by being able to really tune and listen. And we would recommend that you start chanting and oming and saying mantra. We would say say something like Om Namah Shivaya or Om Gom Gadapateye Namaha as a beginning and really sit down and make your connection in that way and do it until you get to a place of centeredness so that you come to a very silent place. You can start off chanting and then over the period of time as you start bringing the chanting more and more internally, then you will come to a place of silence. And then you can continue to let the mantra run in your, your head until that you just reach a point where it's okay to be quiet. And as you become quiet, just listen. You know, prophecy is a very tricky business because everything is probability and most of the things, and you see it with all of the predictions, they're very rarely accurate because things change very quickly. And with every action, you have potential for something to be quite different. But if that's something you really want, then the way to do it is through meditation and to center yourself and to be able to go into a trance where you're listening you can also have prophecy via dreams. You can also have prophecy via channeling, if, if that's something you so desire. So the most important thing is that you make your connection and you listen and ask the questions of what you want to know. We would say to you, you create your own reality. And we would say that, well, prophecy is very interesting we would focus more on creating the world that you want as opposed to focusing on something that may happen to you. You have power. So why wait for it to happen to you and why not get busy creating? That's our question for you. Something to consider. But if it's really important, like we said, it'd be really good to just sit down and listen and to meditate and get centered. And that's the best way to do it. Okay, thank okay. you. Amanda is next. Hi, Amanda. Hello, Theos. Hello. I have a curiosity, I, a long time curiosity. My bird will consistently look up at the ceiling and do mm. low honks and cheeps. Who is she talking to? Mm. Well, we would just say energetically, she's picking up some other type of being. And we initially were going, we're going to say something to the effect that she's just honking at her shadow, but we don't really get that's the case. It almost feels like she's reporting to somebody, but not mm -hmm. in like an official capacity. It's just sharing. I just wanted to know who it was. Well, is that the impression that you have? Is that what comes to your mind? Yes. And what would be the purpose of her reporting then? Mm -hmm. Just to check in on her quality of life or maybe how I'm progressing. Just because what we want you to do is we want you to make that connection. And, and we would think if that's your initial impulse, we would say to you, yes, you're correct. We're not trying to get out of answering the question, <laughs> but what we're, what we're trying to do is to let you trust yourself to know. There's a reason why you feel that way. There's a reason why you think about that. There's a difference between, and we want to, we want to make, we're going to give you another analogy, but we're going to bring it back for you. So stay with us for one moment. Karen used to sell shoes on the internet. And 
you think, where are we going? Well, we'll tell you. We used to sell shoes and she would ship the shoes and the delivery time was about two weeks. And without question, within two days of everybody's delivery time, she would start to get emails from the people saying, where are my shoes? And she would go and she would track the shoes, which the people could have done, but they were quite lazy about it, which is also important to know that they were a little bit hesitant to take the action themselves, even though they had the tracking number and they only had to push a button, but regardless. She would track the shoes and then she would always see that the shoes were within a day of delivery or they were on the truck on the way to the people's house. And she thought, how is this possible that every person that is messaging me is seconds away from getting their shoes? Sometimes, as she was even writing the person back, the shoes would be delivered in that time frame. And what she started to notice is that the people were picking up the shoes. And instead of trusting their own awareness of something coming to them, they notice the absence of it. And that's a little bit of a shift of consciousness. So what we would say to you is when you get the impulse that something is happening, instead of saying, hmm, is that correct? Take it as the answer. And that's what any medium or psychic or channel does is when they get the impulse, they simply communicate it and trust it without questioning it so much. So for the person who's getting asking also about the prophecy, when you get the impulse about something, write it down. Don't question it too much. You also have the ability to have a flow of information. And that's quite detailed what you gave us, that, that the bird was checking in, that the bird was offering information about their well-being and your well-being. We don't think that came from nowhere. We think that that would be something that you should trust. Okay, thank you. How does it feel for you? Pretty good. Like Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll say something. There's sometimes when people, you know, when a loved one has passed on and they'll start to think of that loved one and they'll say, oh, I miss that person. I'm thinking of them. What we would want to turn it around to say is that the loved one is actually present and stimulating the thought of them. And instead of missing them and noticing the absence of them, realize that the reason that you're feeling that impulse for that person is because their energy is then near you. It gives you so much more power and it gives you so much more uh, how do you want to say it participation in the way things are you have an impulse of what you think it is we we know it wouldn't feel very good for you if we were to say no that's not what it is at all it's just a bird looking at itself through the ceiling so we think that the reason you have that feeling that that's what it is is because that's what it is and we want you to start to trust those kind of things that come to you. So when you start to notice your bird or something else in your life and you get an impulse about what you think it might be, take it as that's what it is. Because now, if you know that that's what your bird is doing, maybe you can participate. Maybe you can ask who the bird they're talking to and to start to get information and start to acknowledge that energy. It's a lot easier to make connections when you acknowledge what's around you, when you're open to it, all being there also to participate with you. So we hope that answers your question. We hope that gives you something to work upon. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. So congratulations on your bird being such a participant in your life. Animals <laughs> are amazing and they have this is the second time she's come to me so oh that's very nice definitely here for lessons
though they do come back sometimes they do come back and come back and in different ways so congratulations on that thank you oh thank you uh, Yana is next hello Yana hello greetings Theos can you greetings. hear me okay we hear you fine oh great for your kindness for taking time to and for your thought processes that are so beautiful. Thank you. Very different from us, but... Well, not really. Yeah. Don't say that, because <laughs> that's not true. And Karen will, Karen will wrestle you to the ground to, oh. <laughs> to, to debate that with you, but... Uh, mm. Well, I, I definitely feel propelled every time I communicate with... Um, that is inspirational and... Um, I hope it would be okay if um, my son asks a question. He's actually 10 years old. I'm, I'm sorry, 12. 12. 12, I'm sorry. He's 12 years old. And Don't the, get it wrong. Mm. Yes, it's very important. Yes. My daughter is 10. What is but, your name? Um, what is his name? Rocco. Hi, Rocco. What can we do for you? What do you seek? Hello. Mm. Greetings, dear. I have one question. Okay. Well, whenever I meditate, mm -hmm. I sort of get this feeling like I'm moving the earth up and down. Like, it, you know that feeling you get in an elevator, like when it's moving up, like, it's like, you know, and when you go down it, it sort of feels like you're flying a little bit. And that's what it feels like when I meditate. Why is that? And like, the earth is moving up and down sort of thing. Well, we would say to you the earth is probably not moving, but you're moving in relativity to the earth. And you're moving within your, within your astral self. Do you feel, do you have the feeling that you leave your body or does your body go with you? My body sort of goes with me. Hmm. So is it when you have your eyes closed or when you have your eyes open? It, it can be both. Perfect. That's what we were hoping for you to say. So what's happening is you are expanding into the fullness of yourself because we will tell you that you're a lot bigger than your physical body. The true part of you is a lot bigger. And we'll tell you our favorite analogy of it. And we will explain to you the movement that you're feeling. You know trees, right? Of course you do. And you know trees have roots, yeah. don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you are like the tree that you see on the ground. And the ground itself is that part of you that keeps you from seeing the bigger part of you, the soul part of you. So, and the ground is a little bit like when you have your eyes closed. In your mind, you have, when you have your eyes closed, if you close your eyes for just a second, you have almost limitless space for your mind to go. Do you know what we mean? Mm -hmm. So underneath the ground are the roots. And that is the, the part of you that you cannot see. That is the part of you that when you meditate, you sort of move into that space. You start moving and the roots can be very, very deep into the ground. But Rocco, it's only one tree. The roots and the tree itself are one tree. And even though the ground is there, it's still one tree. So even though you can't see the roots, you're still one being. So when you feel yourself moving, what's happening is your consciousness is becoming as big as it really is. The part of you that's in your body is moving out into the roots and it's meeting more of yourself. So you feel like you're moving, which in fact, your consciousness is for that moment expanding and growing. Oh. And you're, you're, you're able to move more into your full self. So maybe you feel like the earth is moving, but we would say for a little bit, you're probably moving out of this world. Oh. You're not in any danger, so you don't have to worry about that. Because there's the yeah, part I, of you that's still on the ground, and there's the part of you that's expanding even more. But 
we're happy if you can feel it with your eyes open as well because that just shows the strength of your consciousness so how does that feel as an answer for you it feels like a pretty good answer yeah does it feel right okay. whenever you have a question about if something is correct think about how it feels and if it doesn't feel good then you can say well maybe that's not the right answer for me all right what was your idea about what it was it was like channeling the spirit of gravity well that could be possible as well that could be possible as well right. well thank you for your answer i appreciate it well thank you for your question we appreciate your your willingness to meditate what what do you do when you meditate and how do you do it i usually uh stay very still well actually i have many forms of meditation i i can stay still and uh make a noise repeatedly to like mm -hmm. you know concentrate on something mm -hmm. to make it stronger mm -hmm. and sometimes I would just stare at an object and just focus on that object. The final form of meditation, been in a circle repeatedly, or yes. like, it, 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 meditation can, man, there can be many forms of meditation. As, yes. as long as it's something you enjoy, it's a form of meditation. Right, so when you, when you are chanting something, when you, what, are you, what sound are you making? Well, I usually like, well, I, I like sort of, I make a sound like this. Yeah, very good. Very good. Like that, you know? So who told you how to do that? Honestly, I, I told myself Perfect. I had to do it. Well, keep listening to yourself things. because we, we've, we trust yourself very much. And we would tell you that if you have any questions, ask within you. And if you feel that you are channeling gravity, then you most probably are. We would say to you that we think you're moving into a space where the larger part of you has the awareness of what gravity is. Oh, wow. Uh. But keep listening to yourself because that is the best teacher you will ever have. And the fact that you instinctively knew how to make a sound and how to meditate and how to focus is, is very, very good and very advanced. So keep going. Mm -hmm. And maybe you All can right, come and you. tell us some things later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Marco. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sears. This thank was you. our first time speaking to anyone well, like this. So. We would say it's amazing how children are so aware and how he knew exactly what he was doing and how to do it. And he just trusts it. And we would say that that's the best way to do it. So as a mother, just encourage him. I, this is actually very um, correct. You, you turned in right into it. Um, it sounds, uh, we, that was our question in the beginning, and then he went into meditation. Um, what is this uh, love for imitation of, of sounds? And, and how well, can we support Because these it? sounds are very pure, and, and, the, and the, especially the, the initial vowel sounds that, that come out um, are the first sounds of creation. The ah, the oh, the um, you know, the om. That is a sound that's found within every cell of everything that is so we instinctively know these things we instinctively until we stop believing we know them we know them and he's at a spot where he hasn't forgotten truly and when he gets the information he trusts it so right. you know in 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 creation the first sound was silence the second sound was ah uh, the next sound was ooh. So he is connecting to basically the seed sounds of all that is, of creation. 
And by able, being able to do that and repetitively do that, he's aligning his vibration to who he is. And that's Maybe specifically the- what Karen does when she meditates and she connects to us. She is just tapping into the larger part of herself. And that's what he's doing instinctively. Something perhaps that he's teaching us something with the sounds that gotten and we get annoyed sometimes with, with all this you know because he's just relentless he would not stop um, yeah. it's just sort mm-hmm. of out of well what's control. better than dancing with the larger part of yourself it's a joyful <laughs> connection yeah. you know, in, yeah. in the in the times where man was more connected with nature people could listen they understood how to listen to the wind they could listen to the water they could listen to the stones there was no question about the indigenous people calling stones stone people. Stones have their own vibration. Rocks, earth, wind, water, fire. They all have their own vibration and they have something to share and to say. Not only do they as a vibration, but vibration and sound are the same thing. They're interchangeable. There's nothing different. So by making a sound, then you are connecting. And you, as you connect, you become even more aware. You have even bigger ears. You have ability to listen, to hear, and to experience, and to know. But as soon as I got off the pills, um, I was able to mm. go to the bathroom. So the longer you're on that... Oh, wow. There is one that is telling us a lot about their life at the moment. So we don't know who that is, but maybe we should meet them. So, but that is what he's doing, and to know how to do it by spinning. What a beautiful thing as a child to spin yourself into meditation, to stare into meditation, to chant into meditation. And there's no place really to be other than connected. So you say he does it relentlessly. Well, there's nothing better than being connected. Thank you so much. It really, really means a lot to us. Well, it means so very much to us, and if people can remember their childhood in that way, and they can have those same pursuits as adults, then they they get a lot further, a lot more quickly. So That's maybe you should spin around a little bit with him the next time. He did inspire me. I did it once, and I forgot mm-hmm. already how good it felt. Well, the worm and dervishes, if you look at them, that's exactly how they would go into trance. They would spin and spin and spin and spin until the, the point is, is when you spin, what happens is, again, you become one pointed. And that's what meditation is. Just like he said, just focusing on one thing until you connect, making a sound until your focus just becomes one pointed when you are connected one pointedly you're really connected to the part of you that is divine the part of you that is god and everything that came from everything came from that one single point so there's a part of us that always wants to go because we are connected because we're not separate from it there's always that pull pulling us back reminding us pulling us pulling us so it has to be stronger than the pull of this world. I what is stronger, but yeah. don't diminish this world. We came into this world. We leapt into this world. We we chose to come here. We came here to play. Mm-hmm. The thing that's happening now with humanity and the thing that's so exciting and the why all of the beings are here staring down at the, the earth, for lack of a better mm-hmm. way of saying it, is because we're right on the cusp of having the awareness of who we are within the physicality also. So we had a long time where we didn't know, and now we're starting to remember. And what will happen is when we really remember, it doesn't mean it will be no problems on the earth, but the motivation of every single human knowing who they are will change and it will change very quickly. We're not there yet, but every time we have a new child that's spinning around, we have hope, <laughs> we have hope. So 
It's been a, a big honor and for us, the joy of our heart to hear this story. So. Thank you so much. We'll support it as much as we're able to. Thank you. Don't only support, don't only support it, but participate. Okay. It's, it's, it's a happy union. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Mm. Uh, we have a question okay. from the chat. Okay. Peter P. asking, how can we connect with our I am present? And what are the effects of such connection if we do it on a regular basis? Okay, please say the question again, one more time. So how mm -hmm. can we connect with our I am present? And what are the effects of such connection if we do it on a regular basis. Okay. Well, we would just say basically what Rocco is doing is one way to do it through sitting down and through meditating and through finding the ability to become single pointed. And you do that through repetition of mantra. There might be other ways you can spin around holding a thought within your brain you can stare at a certain point one of the easier ways is the repetition of sound and in doing that you will start to clear out everything that is within you that is keeping you from your connection at the same time while making the connection and the only result of it will be more alignment more connection more joy, more love, more of you being you, more awareness of yourself. So you do it through meditation, and we can't stress that enough. You do it by going inside of you. And the only way really to get there, the tool that you have, the tool that you're physically, bodily equipped with, is your voice, your sound. And we will show you something. When you make a sound and you utter it out and then you bring it back in like in the word om you om but when you bring it back in with the m you're you're bringing the sound back into yourself and in the om we said before the first sound of it is the silence and the last sound would be also be the silence it's the om and that resonance of the mm brings you to that special point of single-mindedness. So we would say start with OM. It's the easiest, it's the most accessible, and it's the, it's the perfect sound. So you would say OM. And then that quietness is the echo. And the echo is the reflection of the undifferentiated then moving into form. So, om, over and over and over again. And you will start to know yourself. And you will start to align. And you will have an entire world open up for you, inside you. But that connection and that communion that you will have will change everything for you it'll change your world it'll lift your vibration and that's what we really want is that connection to the beloved the all that is ultimately it's us we are the divine experiencing sound experiencing divine sound coming from a divine mouth and it's appreciativeness of its own divine self. So it's a dance. And we think you know the answer, but that's what we have to offer you. We would like everyone, if we could do it now, just for the sake of doing it, we should all just ohm together. And we will tell you the best way to do it. And it's the best way is to sit either on the ground or in your chair with your feet on the ground. And if you're sitting on the ground, cross your legs, open your hands, your hands being open is 
being receptive. And you would want to straighten your back. And you want to take a deep breath in. And when you breathe, you want that breath to come all the way down into your belly because the sound that's going to come out of you is going to come up, it's going to come out, and then the breath is going to come back in like a, like a beautiful wave of water. And we want you to experience when we do this, and we'll ohm three times, but we want you to experience at the end of the ohm, one, the change in the vibration, but also the quietness and the silence when we say OM over and over again, we mean it. OM a thousand times, OM a hundred times, but at the end of it, there will come a moment, and because we're all gonna do it together, it'll move more quickly, but there will come a moment of silence, and in that silence, it's like riding, riding a wave of consciousness, and that is the perfect place. And we would say stay there, rest in that, because that is where all the love is. That is where all the joy is. That is where all your knowing is. So if you'll just join us for one moment, we'll do it together. And if Rocco can do it too, it would be awesome. So just take a deep breath and take it in through the nose and bring it down and through the body. And we'll just let out an ohm. And we, we, we're we going to do a specific sound. The sound will be our natural sound. But you have to find your natural sound because your natural resonance within your body, your resonance will be your perfect sound. So so for just for, for the sake of this, you'll use our sound, but you can use whatever sound feels natural for you. So we'll take a deep, deep breath, and we'll do it three times, and then we'll wait, and we'll stand in the resonance of the echo of the silence. Okay. Uh... This echo and this silence is really where we are. It's where the larger part of you is. It's that connection to all that is. And if you can meditate and go there, you will start to really have your alignment. That's what you should really be seeking. So, thank you for your question. We hope that helps you. And we'll take another question now. Well, we don't have another question from the chat, but I, I will I will ask one, okay. two. How about and uh, what is your point about uh, integrity? Well, integrity is is part of being honest. It is part of uh, living what you say you believe, and that's for each individual to to figure that out. It's important, and every moment you have a new opportunity to to align yourself with what you say. You know, you really do demonstrate what you believe by your actions. The goal is to say what you believe, live what you believe, and do what you say to align all of those things together. So what more is there to your question? Well, true on that, but I was uh, thinking on the energy that 
In what way? Integrity on energy level. We don't understand the question. Well, they are exchanging um, energies in the universe, mm. bigger and smaller. Mm -hmm. In practicality, yes. Yes. So, well, in that field, I put the question. We still don't completely understand if the word that you mean to use is integrity then because our understanding of the definition of integrity is not so much about the bigger and the smaller energies but please give yeah. us an example and then we can maybe understand yeah. what you're asking i will give you an example thank you the solar system hmm. the the sun cannot be what it is without the planets correct perhaps Perhaps. Mm. This sun or any sun? Yeah, this sun, in our, uh, our sun, yes. Okay. And the planets cannot be without, without him, right? They would be different, but they, they could be. But the way that the solar system is set up, everything works in tandem with the other. Yes, of course. Okay. I was thinking of plasmatic uh, okay. way, magnetic. Okay. So what is the question then? So the 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 sun give and take something from the planets. Also the planets uh, give something and take something from the sun, right? We will go with what you're saying, but yes, we will say yes in that way. Okay, thank you. Mm. It's enough for today. So what is the question, though? That's what we don't understand. Well, in the, with the solar system, it's something fixed, right? Well, nothing is fixed, but there are it's things that are in per perpetual system. motion, and there are things that are. In, in they are in a certain state at this time, but that is ever evolving and ever changing. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So it it is changing, right? But it's, it's fixed in the system. It is working in this way. Right? In this moment, yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, relating. With uh, let's forget what I asked. Relating what what is discussed earlier, mm -hmm. um, it's important on what domain of frequency you are. You will attract what in this uh, what is in that domain, right? Yes. Yes. It's not good or bad. It is what it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why? Right. Okay. Yes, everything is just what it is. Everything is just experience. Right. So by divine grace, by by creation, right? Well, by everything, because well, everything is grace, in fact. But everything is just experience. There is preferred experience, and there's non-preferred experience. And for the sake of the conversations that we were having earlier, we were talking about moving away from something that is not wanted, and. Ultimately, if something is causing discomfort, yes, is an experience, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's very neutral. Experience is quite neutral. The perception and the preference of it is what is, is, is a choice. But in right. fact, from the, from the standpoint of, of creation, it's just something that is. Right. Yes. So don't go to the jungle because the lion will, will eat you. This is like a domain with the low frequency. Let's say you don't go to... Right, yes. So yeah. if you don't want to experience something, then don't put yourself into a place where you will experience it. Right. We, we, had, this, we had this conversation with Karen before because she had a question 
and we'll just expand on this for just a moment, but she, she always would get information in herself and she would think, I don't really want to go there. I don't want to go to this place or to this party or this event or something. And she would say, I don't want to go because I don't think I'm going to have a good time. And then she would go and she wouldn't have a good time. And she would say to herself, see, I didn't have a good time. So what we said to her, and, and also what we'll say to the person asking about her bird, this is, we love that everything always ties in together, but we would say to her, when is the impulse not to go enough? When does knowing that you're not going to have a good time need not to be proven? And when do you trust the fact that you've gotten this information it's like saying the milk in the refrigerator is sour and then tasting it anyway. Even though you know it's sour, even though you can smell that it's sour, you taste it anyway to say, oh, it's sour. I knew it was sour. It's the same thing with vibration. If you know that you do not want to have experiences and you know that you don't want to be in a situation where you bring unpleasantness to yourself, don't go where that is. And trust that the knowing that it's there doesn't need to be proven to yourself unless you really want to experience it. And that's also okay. But it's trusting. Most of the time, you have always information coming to you. You always have your sort of preferential menu that's in front of you. And you think, I, I like this, I like this, I like this. And then the stuff that's not on your menu is the stuff that you don't like. And you always have input coming to you saying, this isn't going to be good. This isn't going to taste good. This is going to be unpleasant. And you have in that moment a choice, the choice to trust that what you want is over here and not over here, so you don't have to go over there. And you also have the gift of the input that is trying to support you to give you what you want. So to trust that is, is probably the best thing. And that's a learning process. It's just a learning uh, process. OK, thank you. You're welcome. We have a question from the chat. OK. Can you explain the concept of Merkaba in relation to human beings? Yes. Um, <clears throat> and we think Dranvalo Melchizedek is probably the best one for this, but we will give it a shot. The Merkaba is really the multidimensional um, blueprint for the human being itself. If you take the human being as they stand like this in their body, the Merkaba fits completely around it. But the Merkaba is also the energy field around the body. And once you are able to understand that and through tapping into the energy grid which is a word we are now feeling inspired to use once you're able to tap into that you're able to manipulate energy along those lines of the merkaba and the way that it's set up so we would say if you're wanting to work in that type of energy field you need to mentally picture a sort of grid and see on every dimension where those lines because it's not a flat object the merkaba it's a it's a fully dimensional object and and to realize that those lines of that of that shape which we're trying to make with our hands but we don't have enough variation in the fingers to do it also scans and spans uh, it's a better way to say it, uh, dimensions. So if you're able to tap into the energy grid of the Merkaba, and we would say that it is actually not stationary, but spinning. And it's actually creates a sort of vortex of energy. If you're able to tap into that and to be able to understand how the energy moves through it, then you can actually use that Merkaba to facilitate healing, to facilitate travel, to facilitate information coming. So. Once when Karen was a little girl, her mother was quite tuned in. She came out of her bedroom 
and she remembers because she was about six years old. And her mother came out of her bedroom after taking a nap and she said, in the future we will travel as energy. You will travel in a blue triangular spinning um, energy ball. And then she turned around and walked away. And she asked her mother later what she meant. And she said it was something that she saw in a dream and that beings had actually come to her in a sort of Merkaba type of ship. But the ship was not a big ship. It was the individual body within it. So, and she said that in 1972. <laughs> so... Um, that's how things will, that's how the energy will be able to be moved. That's how you will be able to travel interdimensionally and also intergalactically is in a Merkaba type of formation. Well, thank you. Um, I have a question. Hmm. The flower of life or the fruit of life. Yes. Uh, that pattern it is in all the universe yes. like a web i see i see thank you yes it's it, well, it's it within everything and the thing is is when you see it realize that it's not flat it is expanded and it's like a web like a web yes okay. and within that flower of life is every shape that exists yes, but it did originate from one point yes right yes I think the center of the universe. The center of the universe, the beginning, before the Big Bang, everything, you can say it like that. Everything expanded out. Right. And vibrationally it came out through sound, through the ohm. Like the seed of, um, of a baby in the mother womb. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's yes. repetitive. Okay. It's, you know, nature just, and nature and the world just repeats itself over and over again. Right, yes. It's like the same... It's like using the same formula over and over again, just in as many different variations as you can think of. But none of it's really that original. It, it, it just repeats itself over and over and over again, in bigger right. and bigger and then smaller and smaller scale. Uh, yeah, right. It's the same pattern, but only uh, what is different is the domain of frequency, the resonance, right? Yes, yes and also size and... and of course, of course. Yes. Yes. That depends on the planets and the solar system or something like that. Yes, but everything is made on, on, on along that, um, mm -hmm. on that pattern, that basis. But it's not the shape. We want you to realize that that's the vibration of it. Everything is still vibration. It's those, the matter that is vibration is just matter vibrationally charged. Do you have anything else? Uh, uh, yes, I was looking to the chat. I have a more one mm. more question. Sure. From uh, Julie Luis. What are the tools to integrate aspect of the oversoul and the oversoul that need healing? And when does one let it go? Okay. Ask the question again one more time. Okay. Ask it in two parts. The first question is. Is, uh, yes, what are the tools to integrate the aspect of the oversoul that need healing? Mm -hmm. And when does one let it go? Let the oversoul go? Uh, I don't know. Let or it go. the, the thing that needs to be healed. The, person, the anchoring in this reality. Okay. Do you say that one more time? I think it's about the, in the let it go phrase, it's about the anchor in this reality, the person, the physical person. I think it's about that, to let it go. Okay, well, the... first of all, your oversoul is the larger part of you, really. Your oversoul is the soul group. one step past that first point of creation. You're, you're, it's, the, it's the largest part of you 
that's almost undifferentiated from all that is. Um, the things that need to be healed within your life, just like with Stephanie, will come up for you in the moment that they need to be healed. And we wouldn't really go looking for things to heal. We would think that there's probably enough that is in your awareness and just know that the universe is very smart, as we said in this, and it brings to you the things that need to be healed in the moment that you have the ability to heal them. Um, when you let something go is when you just, and we were not we're not completely clear on if that's the the context of the question, but you let when you heal something, you let it go. You just are sure that you're done with it. But we're pretty sure that that's not exactly what you meant. But we will say, as far as things coming up and to be healed, it will come to your awareness when it's time to be healed. And you don't really have to go looking for it. If you are finding that you have nothing to do and nothing in your life needs to be healed, don't go chasing after unpleasantries. Spend your time in alignment. Spend your time in joy. That is your time to play when you're not busy trying to clear out old stuff. So don't go chasing things that aren't really there. What you need to heal will come to you exactly in the moment that you need to heal it. You don't have to worry about it. That's part of the progression of the soul. You put yourself sort of back together, but you don't do it until you're ready. And some things will be now and some things will be years from now. But in the moments when you don't have anything that you perceive needs to be healed and you feel really whole, then enjoy that wholeness and enjoy that feeling and enjoy the, the times of, that you can create that are not so busy dealing with some unpleasant stuff. That's really our answer. Let go as much as you can. Don't hold on to anything. The time to let it go is in the moment that you realize that you have it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I think we are finished with questions. If someone here has a question. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Okay. I can finish. Hello again. I can finish up with uh, one final thing, um, a question, if you don't mind. We never mind. <laughs> Thanks mm -hmm. so much. It has to do with Reiki. I recently did a Reiki treatment on someone, and uh, a, uh, their friend said that subsequent, and it was their first Reiki session. It was my first well, not my first one, doing to some giving someone a session, but it was their first one. And their friend said um, a couple of weeks later that there seemed to be a change in that person and not in necessarily a good way. They seemed a little more short-tempered or whatever. Mm -hmm. And my question became, I always, and I still believe that Reiki is nothing but positive life force energy but I guess maybe I don't know all of the ways that it may um, impact someone if they may have some issues if it shakes something loose or is that it totally doesn't have anything to do with it it just made me wonder I'd never really question any possible well, negativity associated with well we will say to you that whatever is in somebody is what comes out and when you're talking about Reiki, which is an amazing transference of energy, and it's an energy that is helping people to realign. It helps your physical body realign, but it also helps you on a spiritual way realign. And everything is working always on several different planes. It's working on mind, body, and spirit. And when you're talking about someone who's experiencing something, especially for the first time, and maybe they're starting to wake up, well, it's just like anything. You wake, can wake up pretty grumpy in the morning because that's something that's within you, that sort of unsettled feeling of what's happening and then you know, maybe trying to grab on to what you know versus what this pull is that you don't understand. For some people, that can be very disconcerting. And so 
if the stuff, like you said, sh is shaken loose and needs to come out, that it needs to come out. So trust the energy. Trust the Reiki that, that, you've, that you've been able to, you know, um, share with this person because it is only positive. But if something is within somebody, it needs to come out. There's no sort of magic wand where everybody awakens and it's all joy. If anything, when you start to awaken, what comes up is all of the gunk that's in you that you really need to clear out and let go of. So um, okay. it's only positive, you know. Everyone, that's just right. finding, finding anger in, in people, finding dis, disorientation and just look what's happened in the world as, as people start to wake up. It's not just only joy. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get cleared out. Cleared out. There's a lot of anger and old resentments and problems. They come to the surface so they can be cleared. So just like that pain coming to the awareness for you, it's just important to clear it. If this person is experiencing negative moods and things like that, then it's, it's important for them to have that understanding of why. What, what is it within them that they need to let go of? There's probably some stuff coming to their awareness that they haven't shared with you about life changes they might need to make and some choices that maybe don't work with their higher vibration. And so, yes, there's a sort of pull. You know, one of, the, one of the things with Reiki that you learn is that if people don't change their life, they can slide right back into pre-reiki treatment you can do it it's like you open the door for them to step through but if they stay with what they're doing then they will slide back and it's the same thing as if you try to clean up your diet and you say okay i'm going to only eat happy fruits and vegetables and then you know you get that old craving for you know potato chips and pizza and deep fried foods and things like that. That's not really a great example, but what we're saying is that if you are trying to lose weight and you're cleaning up your diet and then you run back and eat all the stuff that made you fat in the first place, you're going to be fat again. And it's the same. It's the same with shaking loose things. If you don't really work through them or let them go or acknowledge them, or then you, then you hold on to them and then they, they don't let go. But, the Reiki does its job. It opens the door. And maybe you have to open it a few times. You know, it's like cleaning a window and you really have to sometimes really scrub at that window just to get that one little, that, that one spot that you can't quite get. And you come at it with a, with a knife and you just, you know, move on it. So. Understand. Yeah. Thanks again. But always just trust that, that the energy goes where it needs to go and that, it may take a few times. It's not a one session kind of, you know, cleaning. A lot of that stuff is really in there. It's really good and in there. That's why, that's why <laughs> meditation is called a practice. That's why you practice because you do it over and over again. It, it didn't, it didn't, the person didn't end up with that just after one moment. It's moments and moments and moments. And so you've got to equally balance it with moments and moments and moments of other stuff. So, and your job is just to be the vessel of the delivery of it. But the real change that comes really comes from that person and, and they'll get there eventually. We all get there, but this might just be their first interaction that will be had, but trust, but trust that it's okay. And tell them if they're saying, uh, I'm in a crappy mood, say, that's awesome. That's great. That means all the stuff is coming up. Yeah, that's what we say to you. You have a back pain. That's awesome. Now's your chance to clear it. It's a gift. They may not know it yet that they're being offered something to clear. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So I think uh, one last question from the chat. Mm. Um. Yes, yes uh, thank you so much. I have a question about trees. Trees, okay, who are we speaking with? I'm oh, sorry, this is Yana. Okay, Yana. Yes. And, uh, 
about dreams. Dreams. So we thought you dreams. said trees, but dreams are oh, yes. as well. Hmm. Trees are sometimes are in my dreams <laughs> as I'm flying over them. Hmm. But uh, most recently this year, I had a dream in the um, company of many people showed me great love and I woke up having this thought that how great God was. I knew he was great but the understanding of him just expanded and I feeling that I wanted to just for as long as I could but it slowly you know dissipates and I just know that our mood if we had not such great dream we wake up a little bit you know our day starts not not as happy and my question is what can we do in our dream state to steer it in a way that we wake up happy and we wake up um, the way I did that one time when I when I could feel the power of, of God and, and his ability to create all this multiple realities that kind of what kick started my search and that feeling just something that I wanted to experience more frequently okay. if possible. <laughs> well we well there's two there's two answers. One is dreams have there's two things. There's dreams and there's experiences. And we like to to differentiate the two. Dreams are something that you have, you wake up and you pretty much don't remember them. And then there's experiences where you wake up and you remember it in vivid detail and you really have the ability to think about it a lot and, and to, to consider it because it's something that happened. permanent in the remembrance of them and they tend to impact you in such a way and a lot of the time a great deal of the times when they are very very positive um, they become life-changing and they can change our mentality about a lot of things there was someone in the chat who said once that they had questions about channeling until they had a dream about it but we would say they had an experience of it and it changed them and this experience you have was love and you got to experience some of the expansion of what love can really be and probably not everything that love is but a great deal more than you had experienced previously and it made you want more of it so we would say to you it's not so important that it happens in your dream time but that you need to bring that into your lifetime. And one of the ways that you do that is just like through your son is finding that connection within meditation. And we know we say this a lot, but this is really where it is. It's not anywhere else. You can find it inside. And the idea is to find it so strongly inside that you bring it out. You know, um, the love that you have for your child is a great example of that love. And, and when you talk about God, you are, in fact, the divine, within you is the divine spark of God. So really, anytime you're experiencing the love of God, all God is showing you is who you really are. All that God is, as well as all that you are. So we believe that intention is everything. To have the strong intention to make that connection, to speak it out because that is part of your ability to create, is to speak something, to utter it. So we would say to you that you should pray and you should pray in such a way that you say something to this effect that I am love and I experienced through my connection 
to you, God, to you, the divine, the part of me that is divine, the part of all that is that is divine. I experienced a greater love than I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that that gift was given to me within my dream time. I want to revisit that again as much as possible. And I want to start to notice it within my own life every day in my interactions with my children and with my partner and with the people that I meet. And I'm willing to let go of all this stuff that keeps me from remembering that. So I want to be able to see within myself the love that I am so that I can also really see it in other people. And then I desire with everything that I am to know and experience love, to be love, to thank love, to give love. And it's my commitment to do that every day in a conscious way. And so please, not only let me remember in my dreams, but let me mem remember always. And when you do that, and you say that prayer every day, you say it before you sleep, but you say it when you awaken, you will be looking for love. You will be ready to not only feel it, but to share it. And that'll be the best way to do it, we think. This was a missing puzzle. Did we lose the connection to Yana? But for everyone, Hello. we um, can hear sorry. you. Sorry. That's okay. Your, this, this was a miss, missing puzzle that I've been looking for the last many months, and um, I couldn't help but uh, cry a little bit. Uh, happy tears as you were praying. It, it, it really does help. Well, you know, <laughs> well, we will say to you that all that is, it's a divine dance, and God is just the beloved part of you, but it's the remembering of who you really are. You are love. God is love. And you are that extension of God coming into this world to experience. So when you are given a gift of remembering that, the best thing to do is to expand it as much as possible. Like you said, how can you remember it? But don't just settle for it in your dreams. Bring it into your life. Be it. That's who you are. And what you were really experiencing was you in all of your perfect love glory. So everything, take everything as a clue and as a gift. Everything like you're a, like you're a detective on the hot trail of finding yourself. Every time you're given something that's a gift that's so beautiful like that, just get know that you're, you're being given a clue, that you're being taught something, that you're being shown something, and savor it and relish it. When you meditate, put yourself back there. Put yourself in that space again and feel what you felt before. And when you look at another human being, realize that they also, too, have that spark. They also are that divine bit of God. And that will give you the ability to love the unlovable person. Because they may have just forgotten, like so many of us forget. That's part of this game. We forget who we are. So if you can be the love then you will always have that. 
Ask your son, he'll show you how to get there. Go together. Oh yes, he, he is here with me. I think he is my teacher in a way. So He's everyone's teacher. He's an example of what will be. And the more children that come in, they come in a little bit wired. It's time for humanity, so we'll get there. He needs the guidance now and the trust that you give him the trust that he needs so that he can continue and that he doesn't forget, that he doesn't get influenced by all the stuff. But follow his lead. And uh, so we're, we're really grateful. This has been an amazing time. exchange with you and with your son and with everyone here. So. Yes, really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Well, we are going to go. We don't go anywhere. We're just going to step back a little bit and give Karen back her consciousness. It has been an amazing interaction with everyone, and we are so pleased to have had this conversation. Love is everything, and your connection to that is everything. You can seek whatever you want. You can seek prophecy and you can seek money and all the things, but we will tell you that if you truly have the connection to yourself, everything is there. And what you will truly seek then is the experience of joy. And with that, the world is really your oyster because everything just becomes a beautiful dance. And we want to dance with you in that way. So we love you. And love we are so very thankful for this today. Namaste. 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 With a breath, they're gone. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Wow. Pretty yes, something. wow. Now very, I can see you. Oh, there very you guys nice. are again. Wow. Yes, enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I don't have a lot of words for that. That was really special. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for your, your time and um, sharing with us. Well, thank you for, you know, I was, I was telling someone, it's really the questions that drive the answers. And I, I don't know why that's the, the, the way that it is, but that's the way that it is. So thank you for your, the questions and thank you for allowing the, you know, information to come out so anyway thank you everyone it's been amazing um just to remind you this is human colony um you can learn all about human colony on hucolo.org and if you want to come visit my website it's about oneness and um friend me on facebook or send me a message say hi and uh, i've got some workshops coming up on sound and mantra and uh all kinds of other stuff. So I, I really don't have a lot of words. <laughs> I'm blown away. So anyway. Okay. Much love to everyone. Does, this, does someone want to close with a blessing? Okay. I'll close with a blessing. I'm going to do a, I'm going to sing a song that I learned in Australia. It's a mantra. And it basically says, um, You've never been sung out, but I'm going to sing it out. It basically says, let all of our ignorance fall away. Let everything that is not peace fall away and just reveal love and just reveal peace to all of us. And it's a um, very no well-known mantra. Um, and maybe it's just our prayer for today. 
and for the future that we remember who we are and that we get to live our truest self. So um, I'll just sing it to you. Because Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mityor Ma Amrita Gamaya So Namaste and Om Shanti 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 Peace 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 You could turn it off. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. <laughs>